Okay. All right, so you guys know, that you obviously know we're gonna work on the driver because I have the driver pulled out, right? For, for one of the rare occasions. So by the way, um, most, not most, a lot of people when they come in for lessons the first time, they say, okay, well I don't really need help with any of the, this stuff, I just need help with the driver. And that's all they wanna work with on is their driver. And it's really hard to just help somebody only with their driver because the shaft is so long, the face has such little loft, it's really hard to do anything to, as far as changing your golf swing and seeing instant results with the driver. It's a lot easier to get feedback and, and to work on improving when you're using short clubs. But when we play, we've got to use something to tee off with. And a million years ago, when I was really, really working on my game, we just didn't even bring the driver out. We just left them home. Okay, but now these things are so massive, these club faces are so big, the club heads are so big, that they can be actually relatively easy to hit compared to the drivers of days gone by. So what I'd like to do is give you some, some tips and some things to do to help you hit your driver as good as possible today, okay? Number one is going to be making sure that you know where you're lined up. Okay, so what I've done is I've got that white alignment stick down there on that mat, okay? And that is gonna be parallel to my target line. So I'm gonna try to hit the ball up there. Do you guys see that yellow pool noodle that's, that looks like it's holding up kind of a guy wire next to that telephone pole? Can you guys see that yellow pool noodle out there? So that's gonna be my target, okay? So I've got my white alignment stick, and if you come over here and get a good look at that, I've got this alignment stick parallel to my target line, okay? Now, in order for me to hit the ball straight, what does my club hat, where does my club face need, need to be an impact? Square. Square. So that means your club face is basically pointing 90 degrees to the target line, or, or, or this is going at the target. <laughs> it's not going that way, it's not going that way. All right, so if I get up there and just make full swing, and here's the thing, everybody, especially the guys, here's the full, the full swing we see. Okay. <laughs> It's like a right-handed Reggie Jackson hitting that thing, right? Okay, so that's all I got. Like, I think I pulled something, okay? That's all I got. And seriously, if I'm swinging that hard, I'm never gonna, I can't tell what the heck's going on. So here's the trick, and this is, this is a little drill that Davis Love Jr. gave to Davis Love III. As a, do you guys know who Davis Love III is, by the way? Um, great player. What you do is you swing the club full, it's gonna be a full swing, but it's only gonna go half speed. All right? And this is not as easy as it seems. And I'm gonna hold my finish at the end. Full swing, half speed. Okay, so, I felt like my face was a little open. I felt my weight was a little bit more towards my toe and impact instead of in my left heel. So I'm just gonna try again. So I'm, I'm more in tune with what I'm doing in my golf swing. And notice I'm also going through my routine here. And I'm really just looking for solid contact and a straight-ish shot. Getting there. Now what I do like is it's going right at the target, right? I just feel like I'm missing it a little bit still. And I think the hardest part about this is the discipline of sticking with it. Okay, I, I, I'll know the feeling when I hit it the way I want to. Okay, so that was more center face. 
My face was open though, it went to the right. Now, I'm saying the face was open. What, is there anything else I could have done that made the ball to go to the right besides the face being open? I say open relative to the path. So my, I could have swung the club with my face square to the path, but hit the ball on the way out to the right. Okay, so my face could have been square to the path, but open to the target line. Does that make sense how I say that? Yeah, totally, okay. I also could have made contact in more towards the heel. So one of the things we've done, I didn't bring it with me, is you can put like foot spray, the powder spray on there, and you have to get like the good quality stuff. You can't buy the cheap stuff, but if you get like the, the, uh, the Dr. Scholl's one is good, it goes on there nice and white and you can see your, your mark, okay? One more. One more, and then this is how you guys are gonna practice. That one felt like I kind of pulled across it just a little bit, caught it on the heel a little bit, okay? But I can feel it. I'll hit one more shot like a real swing, and then as I start building up to bigger swings, it does give me a sense of how in control I am, okay? At the end of this swing, I should be able to hold my finish till the ball hits the ground. So I'm holding my finish so the ball hits the ground, a little bit to the right. And it also, it does give me a good sense of, am I swinging too hard, am I swinging too easy? On the golf course, that type of swing would probably work out pretty well. All right, so we wanna see a lot of finishes always finishing in balance at the end. And we are swinging the club. We are not trying to steer the club. Let it swing, you have to, in order to do this, you have to allow like a little, I think it's in the Tin Cup movie, you have to like allow a little bit of a loss of control to have control, okay? All right, let's get to it. So we're gonna do full swings, 50% speed. Thanks, Jerry. Mm -hmm.